listen to me. If you are a firstborn, listen to me. If you are a first male, listen to me. If you are a last child, listen to me. If you are a breadwinner, listen to me. If you are the one who lifts up the head of your family, listen to me. Satan, he attacks, but there is a protocol to the attack. So much ignorance in the body of Christ. Listen, please look up. Look up. I want you to pay attention. Don't you think I'm wasting your time? If you are the first to be educated, the first for your head to be lifted in your family, the first, go and read the Bible about the laws, firstborns. Not just the first to come out of the womb, the first to do anything in life. Do you know why? Because the first of anything is the seed and the pattern. The first to open a door for a family is the first to create the pattern. The first to break out of poverty. You think the devil will fold his arms and watch you? The first man of God from your village. The first man of God from your family. The first professor. The first married man. The first married woman. Praise God. Please sit down. Let me try to organize myself this night. Just help those under the anointing. I tell you, God is doing many things as I'm speaking. You came to church. This is koinonia. No waste of your time at all. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Let me tell you one of the ways that Satan moves. It's called the power of patterns. You know what patterns are? Patterns are repetitive occurrences. You find out, God forbid, don't feel bad. Your grandmother was raped. Your mother was raped. Your daughter was raped. They never shared it with themselves. Yet the pattern will find itself again. Somebody spent 10 years in America, returned back to Nigeria like an arm robber. Another person spent 10 years in U.S. or in, 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 in um, London, returned back. All those things are patterns. Let me tell you what patterns are. Patterns are sponsored by altars. Even if the initiators of the altars go, the altars are still valid. They will speak. That is the reason why you see nations go through patterns. Regions go through patterns. Individuals go through patterns. Families go through patterns. Even ministries go through patterns. The anointing is not for preachers. Not the end time anointing. The anointing is not just for men of God. The anointing is not just for adults. Help that person, please. I have seen wickedness in the lives of people. I have seen Satan destabilize the joy and the peace of families. I have seen great men of God with potentials to do things for the kingdom. But Satan just brought them down. I have seen business people who would have been the crown of their regions. Can I tell you the truth? Believe me when I tell you. Satan is not a friend. Learn from his rebellion and his unbendedness. Satan has never told God sorry. He will never tell man sorry. Just believe that about him. So when Satan comes around your life and acts like a friend, beware of what you are playing with. 
You are not just playing with fire. Satan is every other thing. But he's not stupid and he's not foolish. He has an advantage of age and he's using it well. Please sit down. Why do we need the anointing? To empower the believer to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom. Number two, why do we need the anointing? The second reason why we need the anointing is so that we can tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities. Why do we need the anointing? To empower us to tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities. Results and possibilities that are beyond the realm and the scope of humans. In ministry, in business, in politics. You think Daniel became an extraordinary politician in a harsh climate just because he could speak good English? No. Even the people consulted through divination and they found out that the spirit of God, they called it the gods, was upon him. They knew that this man was not ordinary. And through the dispensation of three or four kings, he still remained on top. Why do we need the anointing? To empower us to manifest dimensions of supernatural possibilities. I made up my mind as a person and as a man of God that I will never be ordinary. That my life and everything about it will be extraordinary always. Not just because I want a name for myself. Not at all. Because I have found out that when you follow the natural course of things, time will cheat you. Men will cheat you. Systems will cheat you. You need to have an advantage that is beyond the natural course. Are we together? It's good to follow the laws of prosperity. I have taught you. But following only the natural laws of prosperity. Save journey. You will see when God will bless you. Or you will see when you will be empowered. In this wicked and evil world. When you are one law to break through. An evil man will reverse you back. To start again. More than compliance with the laws. They are there and they are important. I have taught you. But there has to be an engracing. That can pick you on the wings of the spirit. Remember that the unit of destiny is time. That's why God brought possibilities like speed. Like restoration. These are forces that insist and ensure that you live a victorious life. Are we learning now? In Acts chapter 7 and verse 22, let's look at two scriptures very quickly. Acts chapter 7 and verse 22. Media, please help us. The Bible says, and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. Look at such a man. Do you know what that meant? Even though he was not an Egyptian, he did not have the history. There was a supernatural engracing upon him. He learned the wisdom of the Egyptians. He was mighty both in words and in deed. They were preparing Moses already. The level of excellence from his life, he was inevitably going to be the next Pharaoh. That's why when he returned, you see, as at the time Moses returned back to Egypt, the Pharaoh he left had died. It was his son, Ramesses, who was his friend. That was why when Moses looked at him and said, Pharaoh, I'm sure Ramesses would look at him and say, Dear brother, Good to see you after over 40 years. The only difference is that you have returned back stupid. You were wiser when you left. You've forgotten that this is Egypt. You come and stand looking like a fugitive with a staff and tell me some deity you met in the forest said I should come and release these people who have been in captivity for 430 years. Moses, you have the wisdom of the Egyptians. And he said, all right, I'm not here for a long story. Let the rods 
I told you that they are also preachers. I finished my preaching. Let the rod start its own sermon. And when he threw the rod, it became a serpent. I can imagine Pharaoh laughing and saying, You still remember? And he called Janus and Jembes, the wizards of Egypt. And they came and made caricature of the rod of Moses. They threw Pharaoh's rod. It also became a serpent. And God use that most of you have not discerned the sermon of the rods those rods preach the message that you need to understand you have heard the sermon of men but understand the sermon of the rods do you know what happened the rod that became a serpent ate that of the man and did not increase in size and he picked it up that is a sermon dominion over time and matter is real dominion God was saying something there. Oh, but I'm not impressed enough. And then one plague after another. You can see that Pharaoh was not a normal human being. You can see the Luciferian manifestation. This is why some of you need to pray for your children. You flog them, they come back and see misbehave. They come out of jail. They come out of the prison cell. Will you do it again? No. Two days, they are back again. It's not normal. That determination is not a human determination. It came from, it's an antichrist spirit empowering people like that. There are people when they are going back to prison, they don't even ask them any questions. They just say, just pass, go back. Just go register your name, change your clothes, and go in there. <laughs> Can I tell you this? creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God the sons of God are not here to repeat science science is an advantage but believe me God didn't take us this far to just come and be scientific I, I, I guarantee you it doesn't take fasting to be scientific it doesn't take Bible study to be scientific what we are manifesting is higher than science he did not just bring us to, to just do sociology or to do all of... No, 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 no. There will be a spectacular display before Jesus Christ comes. The manifestation of a godlike dimension of power and grace in and through the saints. It has been written so that it will not be changed. The Bible. We will begin to see people manifest dimensions of intelligence i do i say this i like to study a lot about the world and all of that i like to study about ufos aliens for some reason i find those things interesting since i don't watch movies and all of that i now focus on those things and i read some of the ancient science that you know they tell us we are not alone you know there are all kinds of people around the world these ones these species of people and then i just read up all those things and in my mind, I said, no wonder human beings behave the way they behave. There is a minimal level of wickedness that a normal human being should have. When your wickedness stretches beyond that border, it's not you again. It's you and another spirit. Is that true? No matter how wicked men are, there is a limit. When your wickedness stretches beyond a certain threshold, you are empowered by a spirit. The same way human beings cannot love and be kind beyond a certain threshold. When you move past that threshold, you are not alone too. There has to be a spirit empowering you. We need to be supernatural people. You see, our world today, and I don't mean to cause trouble across the body of Christ, but we have to be careful. There is a gradual exaltation of philosophies, and science above the supernatural why because a lot of people just believe that societies and territories have been changed through their reception of science we're not against that but let me tell you sincerely this faith work that we are part of it came by a supernatural means it is sustained by a supernatural means Find out how we are going to leave the earth. It's not scientific. What is the skyscraper that will take us to heaven? With one last, that blast of the trumpet, those who are dead in Christ will rise. Explain the name of the scientific process that gives them new bodies immediately. 
What is it called? Explain the name of the scientific process that suddenly withdraws gravity. And we who are alive and shouting the name of Jesus will be on our way going. And those who are laughing at us will wave them. And say, I told you, I gave you a chance. Explain the name of that scientific process. Am I against science? Not at all. But let us be careful. Because the flesh realm, including science, is Satan's domain. He does not want you to rise or see reality beyond the three-dimensional plane. Because provided you are under the influence of the three-dimensional realm, you are in Satan's domain. He can manipulate systems and structures. He can play around with your mind and destroy your destiny. But when you rise to that realm and that plane, your life becomes extraordinary. We have so many doctors in this ministry. There are many professionals. It is not unusual that if someone is sick, the natural course is to administer a treatment, and that is wonderful. But what if the doctor is not there? And that person may not have the chance to see the doctor. Is there a possibility of administering something powerful? Who taught the doctor that you can stand before a tree and pick a leaf and process it in a lab and it becomes an injection and you put it in someone? Even the doctors depend on the supernatural for treatment. The injection does not get to your heart. When they put that injection, wherever it enters your body, they leave the rest. Do you not know that every other thing that happens is a miracle? I read a bit about the human body and I'm surprised at the many activities that happen in the human body. Do you know when a human being is sleeping, science tells us and medicine tells us, do you know how many activities in your body shut down just because you are sleeping? That means if as you are awake looking at me now, you may think it's just your heart and maybe your brain that is working. Think again. If you know the, the it's almost like a riot in your body. All the things, the cells working if you don't understand, they repeat it again. This body is as busy as anything. And yet there is an invisible hand that keeps it. Every time I'm in the air, I think about a lot of things if I'm not sleeping. And one of the things I think about is the miracle of a material body that was created from metals runs and then lifts and now we are above the clouds and we are under the mercy of the creator I'm not, I'm not talking about the dexterity of the plane moving I'm saying literally for 50 minutes or 5 hours or whatever hours you are under the mercy of the creator do you know that if that plane goes down there is no amount of you, you can see the limitation Flying helps me to know where science ends. The moment they lift, science says, I've tried. <laughs> Whatever you believe, let it continue with you. When you are coming down, come down to my realm. I will pick it up from where I'm limited and land you safely. And the plane is moving. And I'm sure that God watches in heaven. And he's just saying, oh dear. These people do not even know who is flying them. It's not like they met him to verify whether he's drunk, whether he's alright, whether he fought with his wife, whether he's under a psychological problem. You just know that the owner of the plane gave the man the, the, the access and you now had your confidence to sit down there. Why wouldn't I trust God? Listen, I travel a lot and if I can place my destiny in the hands of of an airline God bless them a number of them are my people I God bless you I'm not I'm not speaking against them literally when we are flying in the night I don't know where we are I don't know where we, we believe everything they tell us <laughs> and yet these are human beings that can make mistakes nobody ever says verify that we are, we are you know how are you sure we are safe? 
And yet the creator of the ends of the earth, when he now beckons that we trust him, we bring all kinds of flimsy reasons and say, God, before I take this step, prove to me. Yet we jump into the plane and sit down quietly. I'm using flight because almost everybody here or many of us here are maybe frequent flyers in some way. Just see what you do every day and every time. What of the driver that drives you? You've been hearing that they are kidnapping, yet you are still going to travel tomorrow. You would think that will make you afraid. You will still go and come back. The longest sea journey I've had was one hour, 20 minutes or so. I made up my mind that I won't repeat that again. 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 Not from the Riverine area. I've made my contribution as far as my experience is concerned. My goodness. Let me tell you, when you are... And, and these are military people carrying me. They are not amateurs. I just said, Lord, well, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. If I die, the only thing is that I didn't finish my assignment. But at least... Are we blessed? We need to tap into supernatural dimensions of the power of God. Everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. I repeat, everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. When you go to the market and you meet a trader, you say, I want to buy a wrapper. They will ask you original or um, what's the other, uh, original or maybe imitation depending on whatever money you have there is one that looks like it but it's not it there is one that is really it everything that is natural is like that imitation there is an original the bible says everything that appears Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 and 3 that it came from a realm that is unseen hear me there is a natural cause of prosperity but there is supernatural prosperity. There is a natural medical cause of healing. But there is supernatural healing. There is a natural cause for growth. But there is supernatural growth. The choice is yours. They both have their consequences. If you choose to live a natural life, there are many, many, many things that you will be limited. You will not be able to do many things. But you can choose to command the supernatural even in your life. Are we blessed? So the supernatural grants you empowerment to subdue the forces fighting against your destiny and against kingdom advance. And then it empowers you to rise to a dimension where you command supernatural possibilities. Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 6. Luke chapter 1. Very quickly please. Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 36 need to run through a few things very quickly so we'll pray Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 now this is Mary and the angel said unto her Mary now fear not Mary for thou hast found favor with God and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. We are reading to 36. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, Mary said to the angel, How shall these things be? Seeing I know not a man. You know what Mary is saying? Mary is saying, listen, I, it would have been believable if there is a process, a natural cause of how things should be from a biological angle. But there is a deficiency here. How will it happen? Because I didn't hear you mention a man. It is possible that God will speak to you. And the natural formula for that result, he will not mention it. Don't forget that it is God who is speaking. Are we together? Yes. The natural course was to wait for the angel to steer the water and whoever jumps in first. But when Jesus came, 
Jesus would have said, I empower you with wisdom and the prophetic to know when an angel is going to come so that you will jump before the rest. Jesus said, listen, I don't negate the rule, but I can change it because I am God. Ah. If you prosper in one year, naturally, chances are excellent that you may be a thief or a fraudster. You know, all those kinds of things because you should be able to build with dignity and honor. Are we, are we, are we together now? But God can come to you and say, because of the cry of your mother and the burden of ten of your siblings, allowing you to go through the natural course of life, investing slowly, gradually, receiving 10% every year until you are 10 years. By the time that will happen, your, your parents would have gone and you may not have the opportunity for that prophetic word I gave them. So there is something I'm going to do in your life that in one year, now when it happens, you will not go around telling people, don't follow the natural course of growth. That would be erroneous. But you will know that your life was an exemption. Are we together? And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. When you want to go from one place to the other, if you have a boat or a camel or a donkey, you use it. But in this case, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and another rule was created to him. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Keep learning the laws of the kingdom. Keep learning the laws of life. But don't be surprised when an invisible hand picks you and moves you beyond the natural sequence of things. I believe this. I believe in diligence. I will always teach diligence. Are we together? But... Like I would always share, there are times that your boat is fine. There are times your fishing net is fine, oh Peter. There are times you are in the sea, but you will still not catch fish. That is not an issue of laziness. The fish didn't come. It's no longer your fault. At that point, you don't need skills again. You need the one who created the fish to gravitate them towards you and say, cast your net to its right side. And in a moment, you will catch fish that your boat will begin to sink. Hallelujah. It is natural for you to start a business and then look for customers, build a clientele gradually through integrity, trustworthiness, and after five years you would have gained experience, made your mistakes, failed, cried, prayed on God, sown seeds, and then you stabilize. But God can decide. In one year, somebody can call you and mentor you and say you will be the African distributor of this product. Just like that. And you are putting your hand on your head. Is it not in your Bible that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, He said we were like them that dream. What kind of miracle will make unbelievers join in the testimony? Hear me believers. Let us maintain the natural course of things based on the laws of life i am not teaching you to ignore the laws of life but woe betides anybody who laughs at the possibility of a dimension higher than science higher than sociology this is my problem with intelligent people and secular humanists they negate the fact that there is a god in heaven and there is a possibility to tap into that infinite power go to the village and they will tell you there is a natural cause there is a way you can plant crops and everything will grow. But there is a way you can have an accelerated harvest. Do you want it? When you say yes, they will not say go and stand in the farm. They will say go and meet a man. There is something he will give you. There is the natural course of politics. You can vote, you can campaign, you can talk to people, they can help you, you can grow, you can build. But there is, we have seen it in this nation. Where God picked people, you know this one, it was God that lifted them. 